Sergei Kovalev retains his world title and knocks out Anthony Yard. So, full disclosure, I've only seen this fight once. I watched it as it happened. And I was watching it via BT. And I, I'm i a long-time subscriber of a, a YouTube channel called Hatman Strikes Back. who's a long-time boxing uh, commentary and uh, discussion channel, I suppose. And immediately when he released his post-fight video, I watched it. And I was astonished to find that somebody who uh, I think he has a... L- encyclopedic level of boxing knowledge i was astonished to to realize how differently he saw the fight from myself so what i'm about to say might be um for you controversial in some way and maybe you won't agree with it but this is just my honest opinion and i guess the the fact that it's honest is kind of verified by the fact that i have a video um, where i predicted yard to win by knockout so i'm not a yard hater or something but so what i am going to say is Honestly, how I saw things. So, uh, secondly, I honestly, if I had a hat, I would tip my hat, take the whole hat off and throw it uh, with absolute reverence at Anthony Yard. Because what he did there and how long he was able to stay in the ring while he was clearly exhausted is not only commendable, but it's admirable. It's something that uh, it inspires people to go further and to push harder. So I really can't understate. I don't want to, I don't want to understate that what he did was, was incredible going into uh, an opponent's literally backyard. Like literally that was Kovalev's town and uh, fighting for a world title with uh, very little, with zero world experience actually, and very little total experience. So with that said, for me, I thought Kovalev won this fight with the exception of round eight, going away easily, I would say. I couldn't believe how frequently and how completely at will Kovalev was able to land that rapier-like jab. Do you know what? For it, it, moments during the fight, it felt like he was actually fencing. The way his hand was kind of moving from stomach to head to head, so quickly between his guard yard didn't even have a guard a lot of the time but it was almost magnetized to yard's face and i i was astonished at how to me considering he's been working under the tutelage of tunde who is a self-confessed uh master genius how he was able to have no answer for the jab he lit his answer was literally to stand there and take it It reminded me, honestly, of Dave Allen and David Price. Now, I'm not saying that that Yard is on Dave Allen's level. Obviously, he has uh, a lot of talent. But he he didn't know what to do with the jab. He looked... To me, the first three rounds, he looked like he had confidence and belief. And... But his punch volume, at least what I was perceiving... Now, I've seen the punch stats, and the punch stats, to me, make no sense. Because the fight that I saw, Yard threw very little, landed very little, uh, and was just following Kovalev around the ring, eating jabs. Occasionally, he would throw a single shot. He almost never threw a combination. Um, And it reminded me a little bit of the Eubanks-Billy Joe Saunders fight. And just that confidence, that self-belief, but being punched in the face is obviously the ultimate deterrent. Now, I'm not saying that Yard ever stopped believing the way that Chris Eubanks Jr. Actually, you know what? Jr. never stopped trying. But again, it was once Billy Joe Saunders started to fade that Jr. came on. And that was the mirror image with with Yard and Kovalev. It wasn't until Kovalev didn't have the energy and didn't have the snap that Yard found some confidence. So I know he exuberated confidence. He looked very comfortable. He looked very relaxed. Even in the when he was going quiet, he still looked bodily. He still looked like he was relaxed. But his punch volume, to me, spoke volumes. He, I think he was really feeling Kovalev's punches. I think he was very aware that he was being embarrassed by the jab. And this wasn't going to plan. And it, so much so, it escalated to the point that he gave up hope. And then just started walking forward and just following him around, 
kind of accepting the fact that he's going to have to get punched in the face four or five, six times to land his one. Now, I know the punch stats are entirely contrary to that, but that's the fight that I saw. Yard, the shoulder roll didn't work. He, I think for a shoulder roll to work, well, one, you need to be uh, seasoned and practiced, but two, you also need to have a foot game, and Yard was just stood there, kind of squared up a lot of the time, eating jabs with his shoulder held high. And for somebody, a, a boxer as talented as Kovalev, it was just free reign. And I, there's there's so much to talk about here that I, I, I'm really struggling to give Yard more than three rounds. Probably two. He won eight, clearly. You could, I was going to say eight could be a 10-8 round, but Kovalev came back <laughs> towards the end of that. He was out on his feet. He was done. But he was still punching and he was still landing on Yard. Yard was so exhausted. I mean, he threw that left hook, that kind of uh, uh, home run punch, and almost threw himself out of the ring, miles from Kovalev. And something else I have to, to query here, and again, I feel like I'm tearing shreds of Anthony Yard. He is a precocious talent, okay? He has speed, athleticism, and he clearly has drive. But he, if, if he has the kind of power we thought he had do you really think he would be struggling to knock out Kovalev who literally was I think you could have pushed him you could have blown on him and he would have fallen over he landed two really clean punches on Kovalev during the eighth it wobbled him and then he just seemed to be unable to to string two pun two straight punches together and it's not like Kovalev was tying him up and making it awkward he was although he was punching back I mean, you couldn't have asked for a better opportunity for a guy who is meant to be as explosive and as powerful as, as Yard. You couldn't have asked for a, for a better situation. And it wasn't like it was in the 10th, 11th, 12th round. This was just after the halfway point. And it's not like Yard had expended a whole lot of energy to this point either. He wasn't particularly high volume. Uh, so I, to me, it was... I, I That's the fight I saw. It was very, very one-way. And Yard never stopped trying, and he never, I don't know, I, I was going to say he didn't succumb, but he did. I, I think the way he was following Kovalev, he accepted that he just, he couldn't do anything other than try and land one punch. Um, I think he, he, I think he stopped boxing with Kovalev after round three, and from then on it was just um, hoping Kovalev ran out of energy, which he did in round eight. And I, I left a comment on one of the, the follow-up videos that said that, you know, of the 10 years, 11 years, I think, that he spent with Tunde, I think he would have done exactly as he did in that eighth round, almost at any point throughout those 10, 11 years. He's always been heavy-handed, he's always been fast, and he's always been explosive. What in the last 10 years would he have done differently in round eight? Eventually, if you throw enough leather at someone, uh, eventually, you know, a broken clock is right twice a day, so to speak. And I, I just, I don't know, man. But again, I'm taking shreds off the guy. I think he is a, an incredible talent. I am mindful that he's 28. He's not like some 21-year-old kid. He is 28, and this is his athletic prime. He's never going to be as strong or as fast as he was in this fight. I very much doubt. And... If allegedly Kovalev's a drunk and uh, he's not interested and he's got all these issues out of court and sorry in court and he's been stopped before by lesser punchers, um, I don't know. I, I think if uh, the yard that I predicted went in there, he would have knocked him out earlier. I think Kovalev was flagging by like round five, round six. I think Yard would have, the Yard that I thought he was would have knocked him out then. I will say that I, if Yard had been with a trainer who um, maybe was a little bit more conventional, I think he would have knocked him out easy. I really think it was the perfect fight for him. And of course, I mean, who, who takes a, a couple of 12-round fights would have been ideal. Would have shown him how to pace himself. But and I, to touch on the stamina, Tunde has said he'd never seen Yard tired before that kind of begs the question is what are you doing as a trainer if you've never seen your fighter tired or not that tired like your trainer has to get dog tired sort of your boxer has to become dog tired in sparring at some point 
I know some of you will be like, oh, he doesn't spar, he doesn't spar. I think that's just mis- I think that's a bit of a misdemeanor because Yard actually said in one of his interviews, um, it was just Tunde and I that arrived and um, some camp and the sparring partners arrived later. So I think they do spar. I think they just say that. Um, but to me, it was a bit of a painful reminder. You know, you can be as positive as you want. And, but positivity is only going to take you so far. I mean, I'm not saying Yard was... I suppose Yard was exposed. At world level, he was exposed. That doesn't mean that he's not a, a talent. It doesn't mean that he's not going to be world champion one day. It just means that... He, I don't think he was going to get a better opportunity than this. Uh, definitely faded Kovalev, uh, who was already looking at the next fight. I don't know. But I, to come back full circle, I have to say what a tremendous job Kovalev did. I touched on his fluidity in my my, my pre-fight video. He is just... It's beautiful to watch. At range, his arms are like like spaghetti almost. They just kind of like weave into to spaces like endlessly. But these things, they have a crack to them. All right, now that jab that knocked out Anthony Yard, and it was a jab, it wasn't a hook, it wasn't, it was just a jab. But that shows you that, imagine taking that for 11 rounds. It, it, his, his jab, although it seems fluid and seamless, it is rock solid, it's ramrod. It looks like it's kind of... um kind of tippy-tappy, but I don't think it is. I think that he's one of these... I mentioned in, again in the pre-fight, he's one of these gifted fighters that just has enormous power without having to wind up, without having to load up. And to me, uh, it was in spots beautiful to watch. The round nine was masterful, and I, I my heart goes out to Yard. It really does, because I really like the kid. Or he's not a kid, he's a full-grown man. <laughs> but it... I really like him from the interviews. He's clearly uh, very confident, borderline arrogant, but not in a an abrasive way. He's got he had so much self belief, and he was quite uh, at peace with who he was. He knew who he was, and he was happy with where his life was going. And that's awesome to see. And the thing is, when you get beaten like that, I, I don't know what questions you ask yourself, but I can't imagine he's in a particularly comfortable situation physically or mentally just now. And I, I I can't believe he's 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 been with Tunde for this long, man. I just I th- I think Tunde is is borderline. Um, I mean, he's a narcissist. He can't he can't say anything without making about himself, and he always feels the need to defend himself. And even his post for interviews, he kept saying, "Oh, you know," and anyone talking about the the comment or the advice I was giving, you know, it's about motivation. That's why I'm shutting lines in the camp. It's almost like he's trying to justify to the world who he is and what he's doing as a trainer. For a guy that doesn't buy into negativity, he spends a lot of time hyping himself up and selling himself. And I think it's more of a, he's convincing himself that I do actually know what I'm doing. Um, This is the right thing to do. And considering he's a master genius, he never once taught his boxer how to move out of the way of a jab. And you saw how effective it was the one time Yar got under Kovalev's jab in round eight and got inside. Look how effective he was. Uh, where well, I don't know why he wasn't screaming at this to get on the inside, get on the inside. It became very apparent very quickly that at range, Yard was absolutely lost. Where was Yard's jab? Why has he not been developing a proper jab? Um, I, I don't know, man. I don't know. I know the story of of, uh, of Yard and Tunde. I know how they came together. Um, and by all accounts, it sounds like Tunde threw Yard a bit of a lifeline. Um, so, you know... There's obviously a loyalty there, and I'm not saying Tunde is... Um, I, I think he, he would do well, just humble himself a little bit to say, do you know what? I should have given him more exposure at a higher level. We should have had more experience. You know, he before the fight, he was all, oh, education is all you need, you don't need experience. And after the fight, he's like, well, maybe experience is kind of important. Like, well, I don't know. And I think Yard, in, uh, in a moment of kind of... Um, Admission had kind of said, you know, it's not just me that's inexperienced. My whole team is. And I think Yard can go very, very far, but he needs to act quick. Seriously, he's 28. That's that's his, his prime. And the way he fights, he's explosive. If they don't age well, look at uh, David Hay. Perfect example. 
explosion like that puts enormous stress and pressure on your body and uh, and not to mention I don't know how many hundreds of punches he took to the face but his career isn't going to be very long at world level if he continues to fight like that because you you all the the polish that he showed against the taxi drivers and the tomato cans and again I do mean the deepest respect to those people I know they're doing it part time and I they would annihilate me in a fight for sure I'm I'm just saying in comparison to what Yard's talent was but I mentioned again in my pre-fight that it's very easy to look good against people who offer very little resistance. And Kovalev was a better boxer than Yard. And Yard, to me, went inside himself. And he didn't have an answer to when someone's better than you, what can you do? There was no plan B. There was no plan C. There was plan Z seemed to be walking forward with your hands down from exhaustion, letting yourself be punched in the face and just swinging these wild shots. It was Kovalev the one that was slipping and, and... and kind of uh, catching shots. Wonderful to watch, actually. Um, I'm, I'm going to watch it back again. But even the the B, the, the uh, historically biased BT Sport had Kovalev up, I think, five rounds to zero. I don't know how else, I don't know how else it could have been could be seen. To me, Kovalev dominated the rounds that he wasn't on the or he wasn't moments from falling on the floor. He when you eat jabs like that. I don't see how else you can win the round unless you're putting some serious hurt on the guy. Again, Yard did land single shots. But that was it. Where were the combinations? Where was the fluid confidence that he's meant to fight with? Just like Chris Eubanks Jr. looks incredible when someone isn't better than he is. And I'm not saying... I think Yard has more technical prowess than Chris Eubanks Jr., I'm not saying that. I just mean that there's very real comparisons that can be drawn here. And I'm I, I'm hurting for the guy. I am hurting for Anthony Yard because I think he could have been so much more than he is. Even at starting at 19 years old, I think he could have been so much more. And uh, hopefully, I said, it's not too late. He's still got a good kind of four years. Probably it is close to prime. So I'd love to see him with Freddie Roach. I would love to see him with Freddie Roach. I think he could be an offensive juggernaut. Um... He just needs to, to learn to move the feet a little bit better, get into position, get in range, um, and we'll see. Let me know what you think. I appreciate it. This is very, very long, but I felt very passionate about it, and I really do feel sorry for Anthony Yard. And huge congratulations to Sergei Kovalev because of the heart that that man showed in round nine. Um, I, I, I've, I think 99.99% of humans would have collapsed and, and said no more in that situation. There's that old saying, Tunji Ajayi style, about um, lethargy makes cowards of all of us. And it's true. It, it really is. You, nothing is, is easier than quitting when you're absolutely exhausted. Uh, and I think Yard found that out when he got knocked out with a jab. I am absolutely convinced he could physically have got up off the canvas. But he was exhausted mentally and physically. And he's like, I'm not saying he quit. I have no issue with saying he quit, but... Um, I think he he just, I think he was beaten as bad mentally as he was physically, though. I think, uh, I know he looked so, so tired. He looked exhausted at the end of uh, round eight into round nine. But I think that was his heart broken as well. He threw all his best shots at Kovalev and it didn't, it didn't do it. And he come out at the beginning of round nine, I think, hoping for a week in Kovalev. And Kovalev was right there to meet him. And I think at that point was pivotal. I think if Kovalev had kind of like looked bow-legged and stopped throwing punches, I think Yard would have found a second wind and pushed on. Uh, instead, Kovalev did exactly what a champion should do. And he bit down and he fought back. And Kovalev and, and Yard, for me, decided in his head at that point, it was nothing I can do here. I'm going to stay in because I have the heart of a lion. But I think that confidence crumbled away. I think he's maybe angry at himself that, that that's what happened. I don't know. Um, it's very easy for me to sit behind my monitor and talk whatever. I have the utmost respect for any boxer. I've never boxed in my life. I'm just a huge lover of the sport, and I can't imagine how difficult it is to do what they do. But I'm just saying what I thought I saw, rightly or wrongly. Again, let me know what you think. Take care, folks. See you soon.